Hello everyone, I'm Al of Malvalentine.co and welcome to Project Nimbus, a mecha style fast paced action game in the style of Gundam and Zone of the Enders, set in a post apocalyptic world where war has destroyed nearly all the nations and cities, in it it is a very high speed game where you have to keep moving or you die. And you can see some of the battle frames as they call it or the mechs being shown here as the camera pans around. Developed by Gamecraft Team, the game has just launched on Steam for Mac and Windows, and the game uses the Unreal Engine, although I have to say from the start the game has quite a bit of lag spikes and frame drops along with some other issues. Every time I cancel the game or exit out of it, it never remembers my settings, and it keeps defaulting to a windowed mode of 1280 by 720 which is tiny. So I've got it set to 1080p max out at the moment. As you can see the game isn't spectacular. It looks a bit like a modified uh, PS2 or early PS3 game and handles quite a bit like Zone of the Enders but it is quite difficult. Now the models aren't bad. I do like them but considering how bland and open the world is you're fighting in the sky usually over oceans the game has an awful lot of performance issues. Now this could be down to the fact that the game has just recently been added to the Mac catalog and it's still pretty much in development stage while I'm playing. I'm playing this game about a couple of days before it's launched here and it still has quite a bit of issues. When I run the game it doesn't actually say the game, it just says Unreal Development Kit. So it feels like I'm just playing an early development build instead of something that's supposed to launch on this day. But even so, it's been quite fun, and look at those good reflections. But let's just go through the options. You can tell there's a bit of localization issues when it comes to spelling and everything. Now it's set to English, I've got it set to graphic card melt. It should be graphics card of an S. Not much of an issue. Now you can see it's got a whole range of display resolutions. And instead of saying windowed, it says windows. Little spelling issue, not too bad. I haven't been able to play the game at all in full screen. I have a 21 by 9 aspect ratio monitor, so it just stretches it really nastily. So I'm playing in windowed mode, if that makes any real difference. At 1080p, I'm trying to record this in 60fps. We'll see how it goes. I do have quite a lot of frame drops, which is disheartening to say the least, considering the game is supposed to come out soon. But it wasn't originally developed from the start for the Mac, so hopefully they do fix these issues. Now, when it comes to the plot and storyline and campaign, it feels a bit disjointed, so at least it plays just like a Japanese style game, I'll tell you that right off. You can see our fancy battle frame right there. And it really does play a bit like a Japanese one. The story is quite a lot like that as well. And it's not bad, it just feels a bit disjointed. Now I'm on Act 1, for the life of me and all the hours I've played, I just can't get past against the enemy. I, I just can't. I get to about 20%, 10% on the final boss. And then I get obliterated. I just can't deal with it. But we'll we'll ignore that. And I'll just go in to some of the other bits and show you what the gameplay is like. I've been enjoying it despite its faults. It's a very good and fun game. Hopefully the developers do fix these bugs on launch or directly afterwards. It would be pretty nice. And hopefully this video does give them some connotation towards the issues I have. So let's get in and show you what Project Nimbus is like, shall we? Now, it's got three casual settings. Casual, gamer recommended, that should be gaming, I don't know. Prepare to die, I'm just gonna go gamer recommended, that's what I've been playing at. Lord knows I can't get past prepare to die, it just feels impossible on that boss. It's already hard enough. Remember the last engagement. It appeared that those ion cannon volleys are fired from this. Celis Taras a critical asset of Children of Fallen Nation and the flagship for Jennifer Carrera, their second-in-command. Today, we'll sink the Celestaris and capture Jennifer Carrera, so please listen carefully. I am going to keep this brief as possible. Celestaris is a modified UCN's Keto-class destroyer. The main weapon is the ion cannon in the bow. There's two VLS systems located on the ship's topside. But what's most dangerous about the battle frames is the anti-air missile systems located on both sides of the ship. The good news is, the system will take a while to activate. The ship has the ability to track multiple airborne targets and intercept multiple missiles at once. We expect that its missiles interception system is almost perfect. 
There's a high chance you'll encounter Jennifer in her personal battle frame, a heavily modified M3. If you have to engage, we advise you to stay away from her machine gun range. That's all you need to know. I have to say this again. This is not an easy task. If the Air Force is the one doing this, they'll have to use an entire wing. All right, here we go. So as you can tell, it's not bad. It doesn't look bad at all. The models just look like they're standing instead of flying, which is a bit weird. As you can see, it is pretty open. Pretty open indeed. So, all right. All right, so the green are the enemies. Red is the main boss. And let's launch our drones or funnels as they call them. Now you right click to select. There we go. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to use my railgun here, which is really good for long range. I'm going to try and get rid of as much of these as I can. Launch my smart missiles. Now this battle frame is state of the art. Now you can see some of the frame drops right away. Now I'm running this game at its highest setting. I'll give you that. That is true. But I also have the most powerful Mac graphically available on the market. And even so, it has quite a lot of issues. I've tried playing the game all its graphical settings. And to tell you the truth, they all have the exact same issues and the exact same frame drops. There are no weapons installed under the ship's belly, right? Smart missiles ready, but engaging at close range is Now, the voice acting is superb. I actually have no problem with that. The scripting could be a bit better here and there. But I've been pretty happy with it overall. I can't have had any issues with that at all. Like I said, the story's a bit disjointed, but it, it does seem to just throw you straight in. Alright, let's fire some flares. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, Missile Barrage is crazy, alright. Let's wait for that to reload. And we'll just stick with our railgun. Now our drones. Oops. Well, yeah, we didn't have enough drones. Let's wait for them to recharge. Come on. Now this is, the models and everything are fantastic. Whoa, hello. Hello everyone. Where did you all come from? Now while the models and everything are good, the main issue I have with this game are the frame drops. They're very annoying to say the least. You can go from a very smooth over 60 FPS and you can feel it and see it. And then it'll just feel like it's going to slow motion almost. Now, the computer also over talks over itself quite a lot, which is a bit annoying, to say the least. But it thinks it could be handled post-launch with patches, and hopefully they do catch onto that really quickly. The game has a lot of potential, and it's a lot of fun, especially if you like Zen of the Enders or Gundam-style games in the PS3 or PS2 era. But I would recommend waiting a bit to see how it pans out with patches. Alright, so we're taking out the ships. Wow, oh, he's just shooting blindly. Alright, we've essentially gotten this in the bag. No issues there. We've taken out the missile defense systems. And we're just obliterating them. Pretty easy, to say the least. Now, the game difficulty scales enormously hard. It goes from something like this, which seems a bit challenging. And it is. I've lost about half of my health. To something where it just throws you into the deep end and just says, Survive. Alright, so I'm going to have a boss fight with Commander Jennifer. Yeah, the game pauses here and there. It's got these little lag spikes even when loading its own cutscenes. Hopefully they fix that. Frame has done all of this. Jennifer has arrived. Alright, Jennifer has arrived. Alright, I'm just gonna kick her ass anyway, because that's what I do. Switch to railgun. I will ignore her. And we'll deal with her escorts quickly. I really don't need these guys. Fire smart missiles, which will auto lock anything in sight. There's one of the frame drops. Pretty damn annoying. Fire flares and missiles. Now we need to keep her out of the machine gun range. Now as long as I keep her out of range, I can just deal with her with my railgun and missiles. But as you can see, she can drop the lock quite easily with her chaffs. 
Come on. We have to keep out of her range. Fire all the missiles. And I can fire a real gun. Now I have had two crashes in the game, and those are usually during loading screens. And the game doesn't really have loading screens. It just freezes the last frame in the game. Which is very disheartening. It kind of feels like your system just froze, but it's just a frame for the loading screen. My goodness, she is fast. Come on, there we go. Oh, we're getting close to the edge of the atmosphere. I have to be careful here. It's getting closer and take her out of her machine guns. There we go. Not too bad. Now, considering the height we're at, she should just die on impact. Main system will disengage from combat mode now. Yeah, and there's a little anime girl that's um, essentially my age. Nice job last day. We've captured Jennifer Carrera. Right now, she's being imprisoned in the highest security prison in CFN's Yokohama base. Our intel shows that Children of Fallen Nation has four commanders. We've captured one, so there are three left. If we're lucky, we're going to bag another one today. It appears that Children of Fallen Nations number three, Obana Takeshi, is assigned to take care of their supply base located here, Hong Kong Island. Hong Kong used to be a large economic center before it sank by the rising sea level after the war of the old world's nations. So there will be a lot of skyscrapers in the flooded city ruins. The combat area is in UCN's territory. Although it's now populated and near the border, to avoid encountering UCN's force, please complete this mission and get out of the combat area as fast as you can. Now what you might have heard there is a bit of audio distortion and crackling. That's actually in-game and part of all the voice acting. It's very annoying and it's kind of disconheartening. It does make you wonder where it originates from. Alright, let's just get rid of all these construction pods and everything they have. There we go. Launch our psycho drones, because they're psychotastic. There we go. Yeah, the railgun just obliterates most medium to lightweight units. It's something I like a lot. Launch some smart missiles in there, get rid of these. And the water effects and everything are good. The game uses the Unreal Engine, like I mentioned originally. But it could look better. I don't know why it doesn't. It could be it's a very early game of theirs. And I hope... I haven't even looked at the Windows version, because I'm covering this essentially just as a Mac game. But... Its performance, considering the engine it uses, and for what it puts out, is very disappointing, especially considering the power of my system. I mean, I have a system that can run Rise and all of those games max out at a native resolution of 344 by 1440. And here on 1080p, I have some frame drops. They really shouldn't be there. Now, I hope this isn't specific to the Mac client, although it could be. But even so, with these issues, with the audio crackling here and there, and the frame drops, it's still a very fun That's game. Obana Takeshi, third rank. All right, let's go kill this boss. Now, wh what I mentioned about the story being um, a bit all over the place and disjointed, it's essentially what's happening here. There are things happening in the game, but it doesn't really explain them very well. There's no continuation between missions and explanation. It's just, oh, there's this, this is happening. Go do it right now. Otherwise, you're in trouble. It does feel very strange. Very strange indeed. Oh, so the guy's got an iron cannon. Fantastic. Now, there's an awful lot of frame dropping right there. That's at least 15 FPS. It's, and now it's boosting up to about 70 again. It's absolutely bizarre. The game really shouldn't be having these frame drops. At all. Now the audio, I've, I did lower the audio before recording after showing you the options. To try and balance out the voice audio. But it's extremely difficult in this game. Extremely difficult. It doesn't seem to want to balance properly at all. Which is uh, another issue that I hope they fix. Come on, 
are missiles everywhere. Oh, he's not too bad of a boss. Just boost out of the way because this guy is ripping into me something fierce with his weaponry. Enemy battle frame disabled. There we go. Confirm pilot life signal. Now one issue I do have is that there isn't any feedback really. You can hit someone and they can hit you. They can punch you really hard. But you don't really notice it except for your little armor countdown at the bottom right there. And the game just crashed. Not really something you want. At all. But let's try and get back in and see if we can show you some more. Well, so the game's crashed twice now. <laughs> just trying to show you what it's like. And in fairness, I think I'm just going to leave it there. I've shown you what the combat is like and all the weapon systems and what a boss fight is like. Two of them, in fact. And the game has an awful lot of potential. It really does. So it says Steam Early Access Alpha 1C. On top right. Like I said, it plays like an alpha. But it has too many bugs to be worthwhile at the moment. And that's a pity. Now the game is launching right now. And I don't know if they're going to have a big day one patch to sort out all of these issues. Or if they're going to upload a new build before then. But until then, I can't recommend the game, especially on the Mac. I haven't tried it on Windows, I'm not even going to. I'm covering it as a Mac game for my Mac channel. And it really has a lot of potential. It could be fantastic. Like, I've played a good while, and I'm still in the first act. And it's got a good few acts, as you can see right there. And it even has a survival mode, something I'm not even going to try. I prefer stories. So it's got four acts. But. So far on the Mac, it's got game breaking bugs where you can't even finish certain missions, where it just crashes the game to desktop. Now, hopefully, the developers do fix that, but until then, I honestly can't recommend this to anyone, despite me actually enjoying what I've played so far. And well, folks, I hope this has given you a good idea of what Project Nimbus is like that is launching today on Steam. If you did like the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share to check back for more Mac gaming coverage. I'm Al. Thanks for watching, everyone. And bye-bye.